Now that's the thinking about thinking. It's going to be a little complex when we talk about metacognition because it's it's more from the perspective of uh, uh, you know using your brain to understand your brain. That's why it's called as complex. Otherwise, it's a very simple thing. Metacognition in a layman's term could also be uh, you know said as if you're talking to yourself. Generally, that happens, right? You walk you walk back to your home from the school. You you curse the day it was quite hectic, or you're very happy about the day that the classes were amazing. Uh, you try to negotiate with the auto guy that that you know for going to home just because you're tired. You have to pay that ten twenty rupees extra, and you're not happy about it. These are all places where you self talk, and most of the self talk generally happens in an environment wherein you're not disturbed. There's there's a lot of concentration, and typically that's in a bathroom. You know, I think you would have heard about it. Most of the ideas get generated in the bathroom. Yeah, that's that, that's quite interesting. I think most of you know that. Let's continue further. Let's continue further. When we talk about metacognition, multiple intelligence uh, is directly related to this. Now, to understand multiple intelligence, these are the two words that we need to understand. Intelligence versus learning abilities. When we talk about uh, intelligence as a concept, um, sometimes... There is the explanation which gets you know mixed with learning abilities as well. Let's let's understand. Intelligence is the the overall capacity of an individual to learn, reason, or problem solve and adapt to an environment effectively. So that's something that's stagnant. So for whatever knowledge that I've acquired over the period of time, or whatever skills that I've acquired, it's like it's like embedded in my system. It's it's there. Now, learning abilities is the process towards this attainment. I hope uh, I'm able to con convince you. Learning abilities refers to the specific skills and processes involved in acquiring new knowledge and skills. So it's like, uh, just imagine uh, I have, uh, you know, Tapan Datta sir over here and Tapan sir has got this amazing, um, uh, you know, knowledge about or intelligence about, uh, uh, you know, music. Whenever he goes out, morning takes a walk. Whenever there's a bird chirping out there, he's able to find a pattern out of that bird. He's like, wow, this is this is so-and-so uh, scale of so-and-so music. He's able to say that. Now, that kind of a person uh, has got a good musical intelligence. Now, this particular person, if I have to explain him something, a new concept, I can't completely be talking about, uh, you know, a literature book or, or in a method wherein... Um, he, he doesn't understand. For example, I draw and give it to him. Probably he'll not be able to relate. But if I sing and talk about it, probably he'll be able to re remember better. So the point here is musical intelligence and musical learning ability are two different things. Intelligence is something where the things are stagnant. It will be there. Whatever knowledge and skills we have acquired. But the learning abilities is the process towards it. What are we discussing today? Once we have understood the difference between intelligence and learning abilities, though there's a very thin line of difference, the gap filling between both of these is the responsibility of a teacher. Just because somebody is able to understand musically doesn't mean always we give musical exposure. So that's not wrong. Just because somebody is able to understand musical intelligence or have a good musical intelligence does not mean that that pers person is actually poor with the linguistic skills of it. Now, these are all some terms that all these people use here and there. Uh, you know, when I say these people, I'm talking about great psychiatrists. I talk about nephrologists. I talk about uh, uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, clinical psychologists. Multiple people come into picture and they all study about it. And so many people have come into picture and so many studies have happened. And I'll show you something. Uh, this will be uh, something related to what kind of intelligence do you have? I'll talk about these people. And for this, let's quickly do this activity, teachers. Uh, teachers, if you're not able to hear me, please check your audio. So I would request you to please uh, look into the link and let me share this link on Zoom chat as well. And I would like to put it over here. One, two, I think you should be able to see in a second. If you want, you can click on the link and take the test right away. So this particular website, the credits to Very Well Mind. And today we're going to use this website left and right. Amazing categorization of the content. Let's talk about it. So what kind of intelligence do you have? Discover which type. Let's let's go for it. What was your favorite subject in the school? You can put it on the chat or you can fill it, fill it on the you know, actual form. My favorite subject in the school was, uh, let me put debate. I used to always quarrel and fight. Yeah. Debate. Okay. During your free time, you like to paint, read a book, run or hike, figure out complex problems. First of all, this question is <laughs> quite redundant for teacher's life. Free time. Aisa kabhi hume hua nahi jab se humne school join kiya. Something like that, right? But anyways, let's let's uh, volunteer for a charity. Listen to music. I'll, I'll stick to listen to music. Which type of programs do you usually watch on TV? Oh, well, here all the options are some American shows, I guess. Yeah. Yahan pe kyunki saans bhi bahut hi option hota, to main shayad select karta. But that's not there. 
but but I'm not really into TV. I'll rather do something hands on. Yes, we go to play, right? It's your day off. Okay, it's your day off, and it happens to be a beautiful summer day. You're most likely to summer day, a beautiful summer day. We should go out for some kind of a call up friends and hang out. Okay, that would be my case. That's great. When you are trying to come up with ideas for a new project, you are most likely to find inspiration by. Okay, ideas for a new project. Mm hmm. How shall we put this? I think uh, my own intuition is the right answer. Okay, at a party, you're most likely to check out the host art collection, talk with friends. Oh, no, I'm not a party type of a person. Dance the night away? No, I go with the friends. But I wander outside to check out the landscaping. Yeah, this is, this is more like me. You're sitting in the dentist's office waiting for your appointment. How do you choose the pastime? Listen to music, hey? Uh, listen to Spotify with my headphones. You've been asked to participate in a community play. What role do you perform? Community play, drama. Anyone into drama? Very expressive people. I think I should be a lead actor or actress. Oh, no, director. I would prefer to be a director. Which of the following games do you excel at most? Pictionary, Sudoku, Sudoku, anytime. He said, she said, Geo Chaching. What is Geo Chaching? Is that game where you say, where is France? And you immediately have to go and point it out. Something like that, I guess. You have a big test tomorrow and need to review the material. What study method do you use? Use a highlighter for important notes. I've seen many people doing that. Read the textbook and take notes. Very rarely students do that. Create an outline and rank it items by importance. Get some hands-on experience. Ah, make up a song about what you're learning. I remember most of the times, uh, you know, even the chemistry teachers come up with a song to remember the periodic table. Well, here the results are there. What kind of intelligence do you have? You got interpersonal intelligence. Okay, now that's interesting. So I think some of you would have already mentioned that uh, in your, okay, your linguistic verbal, Sharina, ma'am, that's great. Okay, <laughs> okay, meeting friends with Chitar. Okay, that's great, that's great. If you have, if you have actually done this, you can put your uh, type of intelligence on the chat. Something like, yeah, creating code words to remember, song sort of a thing, Kanees, ma'am, you're absolutely right. So here in this case, I got interpersonal intelligence. So what do you mean by it? We'll delve into it a little later. But the point is, Whatever assessment questions that we had, it's just a sampler of how an intelligence could be checked. Every intelligence that we're going to talk about is proposed by multiple scientists out there, multiple people who are specialists in that area. Now, the assessments also vary according to that. So just because you got some questionnaire in the internet and it talks about it and, and there is a result out there doesn't mean that it's accurate and does not even mean that you can completely ignore it. So it, it really involves a lot of, uh, you know, research on this and then come to an idea what you are actually specialized in. Sometimes when you actually start getting into the details, aisa lagta hai, like I should have never even started, you know, that's completely fine. Whatever I am, the way I am. One of the tests told me that I am a very introvert person. I can second that. I, I do not know if I'm an introvert person, but but people say that I cannot be an introvert person at all. Maybe, but but so, but I, I'm kind of confused right now. And, and you know what, all these thoughts that are present in your mind, which is conception of who you are, will actually drive the decision making in the future. So in, in, rather than finding who you are and what you are, it's like assume what you would like to be and continue. Now, this is with respect to self-reflection. But teachers, we do not have an option when it comes to teaching the students. There, we need to actually get into intelligence, multiple intelligence concept, involvement of all these theories in the lesson plans, and then delve into the class. Let me show you some of the things, and you'll go crazy about it. One, two, three. Look at this. So these are some of the intelligence theories that is present across the globe. If you want, you can take a screenshot of it, or else this is going to be present in the YouTube as well for a uh, what is that? Yes, Vishnu Priya, ma'am. We're going to talk about visual spatial as well. So the first uh, intelligence theory that I wanted to introduce is called a Spearman's two-factor theory. Now, Spearman's two-factor theory, he categorizes our intelligence into two factors called as G-factor and S-factor. See how nicely they're saying. G-factor is called as the general intelligence and S-factor means specific intelligence. According to Spearman, people have general intelligence that influences their performance on various cognitive tasks. Whereas specific intelligence that are unique to a particular task, you could be good with multiple things. There's no problem with that, but you'll definitely be a master of only one area. So based on this, he made a whole book that is called a Spearman's two-factor theory. Well, this is not that detailed. So later, there came another theory called as Scatter's theory of fluid and crystallized intelligence. Now, fluid and crystallized intelligence is directly related to um, a concept that is concrete and a concept gets developed from that concrete information. 
I'll repeat it. Fluid intelligence is the ability to think and reason abstractly from whatever you have with your prerequisites, which is called as crystallized intelligence. Knowledge and skills acquired through experience and education. So fluid intelligence is like you might forget in the future, but but uh, 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 crystallized intelligence you will not forget. That's how you know cattle's theory talks about talks about. We don't have. I have to get into the details, teachers. That's completely fine. I just want to tell you that there are thousands of theories out there. Not thousands, actually. Hundreds of theories out there. Uh, we don't really have to get carried away with everything. But there's one intelligence theory that we will be talking about. We'll sticking on to that for a specific reason. Binet Simmons uh, intelligence scale. Now, this particular person said that rather than talking about intelligence, let's let's measure that. He was the first person to talk about measurement of intelligence. And that's where IQ testing came into picture. That's interesting, right? And this happened somewhere in 1930s, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and that's what, 20th century. Triarchic theory of intelligence. Now, this is Robert Sternberg, who edited his own document a little later also in the future. But what did he say about it? He said that there are three things where the brain, you know, primarily works in. The first one is called as analytical intelligence, which is about problem solving. You walk in a road, suddenly one ghost comes and stands in front of you. What will you do? That's analytical thinking. I hope you're able to understand. It's like on the spot, you have to decide on what you're supposed to do. Problem solving. Creative intelligence is all about creating a problem. No, it could be a problem or it could be anything. So creating aspect of it. You have an ability to create a program. You have an ability to create an agenda. That's, that's where creative intelligence comes into picture. And the third, practical intelligence. Practical intelligence is about getting inside another person's creativity. So there's a program already done over there. Now you need to fit into that particular surrounding. So that's where it's called as adaptability to the environment. Now this is triarchic theory of intelligence. I hope you know about it. If not, and like just, just go through Google. You'll have a lot of nice videos out there. It's my duty to show you that these are present. Emotional intelligence for the first time, Daniel Goldman actually um, uh, spoke about it, which was never spoken. And even now, the theory which we, which we are going to speak about does not include emotional intelligence. But this is really underrated and very important, which involves the ability to perceive, understand, manage, and regulate your own emotions. Some children, you would say that they're really agitated away from the parents. Some children are really very, very happy and cool about parents not being around. Does that really mean it's a positive and a negative aspect? No, not at all. That's what emotional intelligence is all about. It's about the way you handle it. And just because somebody's crying doesn't mean they, they are very weak with emotional intelligence. In fact, people who cry more, uh, the survey says that their emo emotional intelligence has been you know, way better. The score has been way better both in oneself and in others. Finally, the last two intelligence. After this, I'll not bore you with the theories. Successful intelligence, Robert Sternberg, I told you, triarchic. Uh, he, he edited that in the future. And he said that uh, uh, working towards uh, manifestation of what you want to become. So, for example, uh, he uh, that, 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 that's a nice video. Suppose if uh, Monica Mam would like to imagine herself to be, uh, say, receiving a President's Award for the best teacher in the country, something like that. Now, if that's the ambition, you, you got to imagine that. You know, you, you need to keep on thinking about it. You'll be surprised that one day you'll be there on that stage. This is what successful intelligence is all about. It's heavily uh, related to emotions as well. But it, it's also about something to do with self and manifestation of whatever your thought process is. So that's where successful intelligence comes into picture. Then finally, one theory by an Indian person. The past theory called as planning, attention, simultaneous, successive by J.P. Das. But he's actually not Indian. I should, I should correct myself. Indo-Canadian. Okay. So he talked about uh, the intelligence. But he did not speak about intelligence as such as an individual component he spoke about it from the perspective of the learning abilities towards achieving an intelligence he said we need to plan first so the plan depend upon uh, what kind of activities do you like then attention with respect to involving you in that particular process so i would request you to please go through it but these are some of the famous intelligence theories that are adopted across the globe by various countries and various systems. Let's quickly go through what we are going to get into. So we are going to get into today and under Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence. And these are the eight categories. I think you all know this. Harvard Gardner. Exactly. Exactly. So he he talks about, oh, you always imagine, hi, fantastic. <laughs> okay. he, he says that uh, intelligence can be categorized into eight areas. And then it was also uh, in the later, I think around 2000, they came up with another idea saying that this one more called as the ninth uh, intelligence. I'll talk about it. So the first one is visual spatial. Second is linguistic verbal, uh, interpersonal and intrapersonal, logical or mathematical, 
म्यूजिकल बॉडीली काइनेस्थेटिक एंड नेचुरलिस्टिक आई विल रिपीट इट प्लीज हैव इट इन द बैक ऑफ योर माइंड इंटेलिजेंस इज डिफरेंट लर्निंग एबिलिटीज इज डिफरेंट in order to have or make a child ready with a particular type of intelligence the exposure towards that intelligence has to be given maximum so let's talk about it one step at a time so right now i would like to quickly open the website from where this is taken i think uh, and and uh, yeah the ninth in ex intelligence that we were talking about is called as the existential intelligence it's it's related to a little bit of spirituality um where i i wouldn't really call that as you know it's not a religious thing but more from uh, the metacognitive abilities of uh, understanding yourself uh, you know it's it, i we talked about the panchakosha theory in uh, the national curriculum framework very similar to that well uh, frames of mind is a book by howard gardner the theory of multiple intelligence it's it's still available it's around 1549 rupees and uh, uh, the he has explained all these things in a very detailed manner the summary of whole book in a matter of around 50 minutes he has also done a youtube video on the same and that is also present here and for the people who think that howard gardner is no more no he's there he's there he works at harvard university in fact recently i think uh, there is a school called as glendale academy in hyderabad uh, thanks to megna ma'am i came to know about it so that he he had come to india there is a school over there where the whole classroom is classified into multiple intelligent students so these are all visual students these are all auditory students the sections are divided like that the lesson plans include all these things so what are these things let's talk about it for that i would like to directly go to the website rather than so the first thing is visual spatial intelligence people who are strong in visual spatial intelligence are good at visualizing things and these individuals are often good with directions as well as maps how many of you are confident you can raise your hands right now raise your right hand are you raising your right hand right now i hope you're doing that yeah somewhere okay that's great suppose if you've raised your left hand and then right hand you have little poor visual spatial intelligence i hope you don't mind and suppose if you get confused with going to the right or going to the left walking to the right walking to the left visual spatial intelligence needs to be introduced or implemented something like that i hope you are getting the connect yeah now here the characters they 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 read and write for enjoyment are good at putting puzzles together interpret pictures graphs and charts well enjoy drawing painting and the visual arts i'm giving the link of this particular website right on the chat right away and uh, great oh uh, no 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 it didn't come i guess yeah here we go and uh, you should be able to see this right now so if you're strong in visual spatial intelligence good career choices for you are architect artist engineer okay so uh, i don't want anybody to be misdirected over here just because you're good with visual spatial doesn't mean you are bound to only these things but if that's the dominating factor then yes these are linguistic and verbal intelligence is all about uh, the ability to choose the words sometimes you like a conversation because you have this knack of using good words in a language uh uh भाषाओं की प्रतिभा इज डायरेक्टली रिलेटेड टू द वोकैबलरी ऑफ इट डिट यू अंडरस्टैंड आई यूज बोथ हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश आई रियली प्रैक्टिस द लॉट टू से द स्टेटमेंट सो दिस इज बिकॉज ऑफ द लिंग्विस्टिक एट्रीब्यूट ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर पर्सन सो रिमेंबर रिटर्न एंड स्पोकन इन्फॉर्मेशन एंजॉय रीडिंग एंड राइटिंग दीज पीपल आर रियली क्रेजी दिल बी एबल टू कंप्लीट वन कंप्लीट बुक यू नो रीडिंग इट इन वन वीक आई डोट नो बट या दे यूज अ लॉट ऑफ ह्यूमर वेन टेलिंग स्टोरीज डू यू डू दैट if you do then yes you are a linguistic person as well potential career choices writer and a journalist lawyer and a teacher so i think most of you are there coming under this category called as linguistic verbal intelligence let's go forward logical and mathematical intelligence is all about analyzing problems and mathematical operations like observing a pattern isko dekhte hue na sa lagta hai ki this like the moment i look at it it is more like uh, uh, you know clouds forming the shape of an elephant something like that you know uh, or else there is a pattern over here uh, here also there's a triangle here also there's a triangle when you look into some structure and things like that so they have an excellent solving problem solving skills enjoy thinking about abstract ideas and can solve complex computations potential career choices they can become a scientist mathematician computer programmer engineer accountant now whatever on, on the website that we are looking at, uh, at it's more like somebody who's got already attained all these things and they're talking about the career choices but as a teacher you we are all going towards improving these for the students so bodily kinesthetic intelligence is all about uh, physical movement and motor control uh, have you seen this some people have this uh, ability of controlling your hand like this i mean the first two fingers will be stuck and the little finger and the ring finger will also be stuck koi hai kya aisa karte hue right now if you're doing that i'm not sure 
yeah this was one example that i learned in one of the videos if you're doing that then you're really good with motor skills and if you're very much into rangoli and and you know uh, miniature drawings like uh, mandala art and things like that you are really good with bodily kinesthetic intelligence so bodily kinesthetic does not always mean football and cricket it could also mean these small nuances that's why these examples so crafts person dancer builder surgeon a surgeon a sculptor an actor these are all people bodily kinesthetic musical intelligence comes with rhythm and music now this is all about pattern recognition from auditory listening now here it is all about uh, you know they enjoy singing and playing musical instruments even if it's bad it doesn't matter recognize musical patterns and tones easily potential career choices are musician composer singer music teacher conductor i think music teachers are all happy out there exactly uh, the other other was a uh, gross and fine motor skills monika you're absolutely right when we talk about interpersonal intelligence it's all about understanding and relating to other people most of the english classes and the lectures talks about conversation between two people have you seen that uh, you know conversation to order a grocery or conversation to check for the time in a railway station at what time the train will come and things like that now these are all related to the way you talk to a particular person now this is where interpersonal skills comes it's not about how you make the other person feel it is about how you make yourself feel confident and comfortable in 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 a particular crowd or in a particular group of people interpersonal intelligence is really amazing and and i think this is the need of the r uh, for the students uh, they need to you know it's high time they need to know how to talk to someone something like that then then potential career choices psychologist philosophers counselors salesperson politician 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 that's good i should try one intrapersonal intelligence now intrapersonal intelligence is all about the same conversation but within yourself it's more from the perspective of analyzing uh, uh, what you are good and bad at you know they they call that as a swot analysis strength weakness opportunities and what's t what's t i'm forgetting you can put it swot analysis a uh, strength weakness opportunities and what is t t t stands for come on put it on the chat threat exactly yeah threat i remember threats <laughs> somewhere intrapersonal intelligence is very important for that particular area they could be a philosopher writer theorist and scientist finally the last part which is explained over here which is uh, uh naturalistic intelligence the according to the old document where it talks about uh, being with the nature they they like like living in an open environment in 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 a in a in a more like a village background setup involved in agriculture planting more trees uh always against deforestation and things like that are interested in subjects such as botany biology and zoology categorize and catalog information easily enjoy camping gardening hiking not a party person naturalistic people like me i guess so they can be a biologist conservationist gardener and farmer that's interesting right and finally the ninth which got added little later which is called as existential intelligence an ability to see the bigger picture uh, have a long term outlook like something like there is this question called as how far do you see yourself in no sorry where do you see yourself after 5 years where do you see yourself after 10 years something like that if you are able to answer that question you really got good ex existential intelligence it's like you know about your where you are self esteem and self confidence for such people are really high i've got some friends who are totally confident about the wrong things that they already know they think that, that that's right now yeah, including me even me at times well that that's with, with respect to the potential career choice philosopher theology and pastoral council counselor pastor as well existential <laughs> anyways so these are some of the intelligence let me stop share the screen quickly teachers i've given the link also on the chat so these are the multiple intelligence that are present now coming to the point when we talk about these intelligence after a certain age of you know post the adolescence i'll repeat it post the adolescence these intelligence become stagnant that means a particular person gets sufficient exposure on one particular area or one particular domination happens and they are like uh, this particular person can only understand things with visual spatial approach this particular person can understand only with auditory approach but during the school days it's not stagnant in in case out of all these explanations if anybody out there felt that i've got all the attributes you're really good you're really good it's it's not about one person getting specialized in one particular area that happens by chance it's not a targeted advice 
but sometimes it is targeted some children are like completely focused on only one area like uh, especially it happens in home schooling where uh, you know always get exposed to computer science computer science computer science they become a computer science specialist always exposed to music 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 they become musicians so when we talk about uh, the multiple intelligence as as a pedagogical aspect it's important for a school and a teacher to have the exposure uniformly distributed at least till grade 8 i'll repeat it at least till grade 8 so these are some of the things that are mentioned in uh, the national curriculum framework as well as the multiple intelligence theory in various other documents some of them are the very well mind website as well i'll quickly share my screen and show you one of the videos of how a class happens with respect to mi and post that we'll get on into the interview with that particular person you know that's interesting so here in this case i would like to share my screen please watch this video you will get a very good insight on how mi could be implemented in the school and they call this blended learning as well watch this yes nice job so the impact of differentiation the students feel successful they feel supported they know if something is difficult for them there's something that's a little more in line with their strengths coming up soon so it really makes education fun and approachable i really think it's the most effective way that i have seen to teach the vision and the mission of highlander is to use innovative practice as a social catalyst. We want our kids to be able to do anything any other kid from Providence could do. We use differentiation all across the curriculum here at Highlander and especially in the first grade. Although the content is the same, having the stations really allows me to tailor my lessons to each individual group of learners. So how the differentiation looks in my classroom, we start off with a whole group lesson. So let's get our reading glasses on. Let's get the letter part of our brains activated. This section of our curriculum, we have been looking at non-fiction texts. When we're looking at our book today, we're going to be thinking about where we can get information. And then in the phonics realm, we focused on contractions. We're taking two words, and what are we sticking them together with? Apostrophe. Yes, Karen. Good and job. then we break off into our small groups. So our yellow group is still learning how to do a lot of our literacy things. The green group is doing pretty well, but has a few things to work on still. And our blue group is hitting all the first grade standards and needs to be stretched. So our differentiation kind of takes two forms. The first is by student grouping, and the second is by modality of learning. We have 20 minutes per station, and there are three of the stations. The students will rotate through all three stations each day. So our first station for the blue group is the computer station. The students use a Google form to check in. They'll normally watch a video or carefully observe a photograph and answer some questions about that. We watched a video about how to grow a seed. We had it to type in our favorite part and why. After they finish that form, they can check out an ebook. And then you could do this game of reading called Teacher Master How to Read. We're delivering things in a way that is visual, that is auditory, that is individual to the students through the technology. After that, she rings the bell. Clean up, switch up, first grade readers. We switch to the sort station. Our sort station is more of a physical modality. They're using their bodies, which is so important for first graders. They need to move. Kids are cutting out the words. They're gluing them down. We had a contrasting game. It's fun because it's all mixed up and you had to find the right pieces. And then after we do that, we do rainbow writing. That's another way that we differentiate. If students are able to get through more work, then they have some freedom of choice. Clean up, switch it up. <laughs> the last station, we're talking to each other and learning from each other. So that's more of the social interaction type of modality. I like the teacher station the most because we get to be with Ms. Gallagher and we get to learn cool stuff. So take a look at the illustrations on this page, right? And the content is the same. 
but it can be differentiated in a number of ways. My blue group, for example, they know what text is. They know what illustrations are, and so for them, I create a Venn diagram. You need to make one circle like this, and then you make another circle overlapping that. Oh! For the yellow or the green group, I'm just leaving the Venn diagram out of it. We're still doing essentially the same thing, but just that piece that might be confusing to some of those students, I just leave that out for a later time. They'll get to it. All right, so clean up and meet me in the middle of the rug for writing. Nice work, first grade. Being able to move through those stations, it's just another level of helping the students learn as much as they can each year. They really feel excited when they make that growth. They're proud of themselves. They feel like they're effective learners. As a teacher, honestly, it is a lot of work, but the results that you see and the happy faces of the kids and the good feeling that you have in the classroom is worth it. So that's with respect to uh, one of the schools and, and you would have seen that uh, the differentiated learning approach. Now differentiated learning approach considering multiple intelligence is one aspect. Differentiated learning approach considering technology as one aspect is called as uh, one aspect is called as blended learning. So end of the day it's all about the same uh, photosynthesis or total inter internal reflection or, or uh, algebraic identities but addressed in multiple methodologies. Multiple intelligence is an acquired knowledge. I mean, something that's stagnant. And, and the process towards that is our lesson plan. Let's understand about this in a detailed manner while talking to one of our psychologists. And I would like to quickly uh, tell about uh, Ms. Samanvita Adhisheshan over here. And for that, let me share my screen. And uh, yeah, here we go. So uh, I'm not able to see the Zoom. Give me a moment. Yeah, here we go. So yes, Mrs. Samanvita is an uh, RCI licensed clinical psychologist and uh, is a member of the Tamil Nadu Association of Cl Clinical Psychologists, TNACP, and Clinical Psychology Society of India. Uh, she was doing her private practice in Chennai and is continuing the same in Bangalore at present. She has also been doing online consultation and has a client base in different states of India and abroad too. She has completed her MPhil in clinical psychology from the Government Institute of Mental Health, Masters in Applied Psychology from JBAS, SIET College for Women, and Bachelor's in Psychology for, from Women's Christian College. She has done certificate courses in learning disability, Montessori education, and graphology. She has an experience working with children, adolescents, and adults. She has also worked with cancer patients and their caregivers. In the past, she has worked as an assistant professor, life skills trainer, and a guest lecturer in schools and colleges. She has been a part of few community programs on mental health for public. She has conducted an early identification program in school children. Uh, she has also offered a helping hand to the students of St. Louis Institute for the Deaf and Blind, Chennai, by giving as a scribe for their examinations. She is a world record holder. She, along with her clinical psychology fraternity, has been awarded by the Elite World Records, Asian Records Academy, India Records Academy, Tamil and Book of Records on the grounds of most number of clinical psychologists presenting a webinar on mental health to different spectators simultaneously. Parenting and child development is her expertise and she has been basing most of her work on the same. She conducts webinars for public and support groups for mothers through her professional Instagram profile and the links of the same will be coming on the chat. You can actually follow her and contact her for personal consultation as well. So Samanvita ma'am, we welcome you to the session. I hope you are able to be uh, visible and audible to us. Are you? Yes, yes. Thank you so much for the introduction and uh, lovely presentation there. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. So now, uh, so all the teachers and various leaders out there are present and we would like to quickly ask you some questions related to intelligence and learning abilities. Uh, some of them will actually be for us to break our existing conceptions. So we would request you to, from your point of view, present your views. The first question goes something like this. So most of us think about intelligence as an innate quality. So what do you think about it? Is intelligence an innate quality or a, a developmental attribute? I mean, what role... Uh, does a boy or a girl, you know, right off, or a transgender for that matter, right after birth, have to do with intelligence? Could you please throw some light on that? Sure, sure. See, basically, there is influence of both the neurobiology and our environment as well. 
so both plays a you know major role in our intelligence environment being a little uh, uh, you know extra uh, because research suggests that um, you know 49% of the contribution is from our genes that is our neurobiology and 51% is from the environment so so uh, you know even though the child has innate uh, you know uh, intellig uh, intelligence uh, or the abilities the amount of exposure the child receives or only activates the genes for it to be able to you know uh, explore and uh, uh, um, improve further okay 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 in that so one particular Okay, that's great. So just just because I'm I'm the son of a teacher, uh, does not really mean that I need to be a teacher. I can I can continue in the dimension of music as well, right? Correct, correct, correct. But the chances of me becoming a teacher is way better than the chances of me becoming a musician. Don't you think so? That's that's also there. That's also there. But again, where the interest lies. See, sometimes people may possess skills, uh, you okay. know, necessary for one particular career. But then the interest is something which matters only. Uh, see, I, I think you pointed it out in the uh, presentation as well, where not. knowledge right. interest and skills all of it are important for important. you know to choose the career path so you, you need to see how they align perfect and and i think this is the similar understanding for most of us here in the group thank you so much ma'am i would like to ask you another question something uh, again uh, so can a child uh, you know right after birth this is somewhere uh, a newborn baby within 2 to 3 years old can a child possess all the intelligences in one brain i mean uh, like they can be a visual learner they can be an auditory learner they can be you know musical learner so what do you think about it Yes, yes. See, uh, a child can possess all sorts of intelligence. We, if if you had, uh, you know, I mean, we uh, ran through the um, multiple intelligences right some time back. So if we see, we would have been able to relate to each and every, you know, uh, uh, factor of intelligence. So it's not that uh, uh, we only have one type of intelligence and we need to stick on to that. See, we all have the ability to do everything. It's just that which one is dominating that is what matters, and which one we are exposed to more, and which one we are interested in that is what you know matters. Okay, that's great. That's great. So again, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, you know the same question of intelligence being possessed. Uh, and as you said about the exposure so that brings me to the next question and uh, in the meanwhile uh, the teachers if you have any questions you can put it on the chat uh, we can have three or four questions addressed from the chat as well from the public so that brings me to the next question ma'am where we talk about uh, this particular attribute of an intelligence for a particular learner should it be in the school to improve that particular intelligence or is it like the parents role to identify that particular intelligence and put the child in that kind of a particular school yeah so i would say it's it's both the, their responsibilities because uh, see as a parent the parent knows the child completely the teacher also yes understand the child to a child to an uh, extent but then you know a teacher also has a barrier where she has like the, uh, an entire classroom so of say 40 so she can't like keep uh, focusing on one particular child see the ideal mantra for every parent is what i suggest that you know follow the child right the child knows where to take you so uh, you know when you follow the child you basically uh, you know give uh, importance to their uh, interests their skills you see what they want so the child has the autonomy to explore in the ways that they want to so when the school and parents work together you know towards uh, 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 gaining this there will the, the child will definitely bloom that is one thing and uh, you know the other thing is that teachers in in this uh, manner can be a little uh, you know uh, gentle in their approach <clears throat> see when they have a particular lesson plan they need to you know accept the fact that not all children will be able to you know fit into the structure of the lesson plan that you have for children so when that happens it becomes difficult for teachers because they get anxious they they would feel like you know i am i am i am you know planning a lot of things and why is this child not able to learn? on you know i i i am doing it according to my plan where am i going wrong so sometimes what happens is teachers start they start you know uh, 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 analyzing and they start thinking that you know they have gone somewhere and they try to you know improvise and somewhere they fail see probably that is because they have a proper structure so here to include all the other children so have a, have a you know semi structured lesson plan right where you have a structure but also are able to be flexible enough to uh, um, include other children who are not able to fit in the particular plan that you have for yourself so that way you will be able to access the other children so okay so that's like uh, some we we have the saying called as one size fits all 
does not actually applicable so you mean exactly. to say that something like that right yes yes perfect perfect that's that's something understood ma'am and so in that case uh, so that, that would again uh, uh, there are some questions that are coming on the chat and uh, mm -hmm. that that's quite relevant according to us i i feel that are there any uh, you know psychological principles that uh, the educators be aware of while planning mm -hmm. a lesson or or do they need to prepare on a per certain kind of rubrics uh, you know for them to be prepared to face the children addressing all the multiple intelligence what what is your take on that so i think this theory of multiple intelligence is uh, you know suffice to for, for them to plan a lesson plan because they uh, a gardener uh, you know goes off uh, goes on exploring multiple uh, facets of it that's why it's called as multiple uh, you know intelligence so i think oh. this should be uh, fine while preparing it's just that keep in mind follow the child semi structured lesson plan and they'll be good to go okay so it's like uh, whatever existing uh, knowledge and skills that we possess Correct. it's more than sufficient for us to get involved Correct. right Correct. that's fantastic Correct. that's fantastic uh, what are some activities that could be developed by a teacher uh, you know in order to improve uh, you know uh, a particular type of intelligence for example when i say that uh, a teacher feels like improving visual spatial skills for a particular child so uh, what what would be your suggestion on each of these attribute one by one okay see there are activities uh, which can be you know used uh, uh, with children to improve one particular factor or facet of intelligence okay. uh, like for example mazes yeah so mazes can be used to improve the visual spatial uh, abilities of a child but here uh, the beauty of uh, uh, this activity or any activity as such is that you know when you when you focus uh, when you try to uh, bring in an activity to focus on one particular uh, uh, factor of intelligence other factors are also involved eventually like for example in maze the child needs to think logically should i go this way or that way it's not just the visual spatial but then if i go this way will i be able to uh, finish that the cause and effect or you know the reasoning part of it and also the child tries to you know trace the uh, way so the body right, kinetic right. also is involved so you you bring in one activity multiple uh, Uh, or you know to at least two or three uh, factors would be involved okay okay so okay. any activity a teacher does will definitely engage a child okay so it's like uh, uh, it's not about a particular activity design for a particular attribute it's like there could be a dominating activity but correct, the other correct. aspects are also getting addressed yes, okay that's yes. great that's great so any any uh, uh, you know uh, one of the questions is like many people over here are mentioning about uh, rubrics so mm -hmm. do you have any specific rubrics or uh, a platform on which the students you know are tested like any uh, test tool mechanism how do you all psychologist you know work mm -hmm. on that particular area Okay. Okay. Uh, so we base. I mean, uh, to, with respect to the, to the intelligence, is what you're asking. Yes, with respect to the intelligence. Yes. Yes. Okay. We have we have lots of tools to assess their IQs and uh, to see uh, you know what type what type of a learner they are and uh, you know to see if they have any learning difficulties or uh, uh, other sort of other sorts of behavioral and emotional concerns as well. So the thing is, uh, 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 here I would like to you know make a suggestion. Uh, you know, during PTA meeting. right uh, when the teachers meet the parents like try to uh, you, you know more than the see of course the parents would all, would all be very uh, uh, you know inquisitive about what's happening in school and how they you know child is in school but rather it it will be better if the teacher tries to understand the child when the child is at home like asking uh, about their talents their uh, you know interest so maintaining a personal profile of a child will help the teacher understand the child holistically at home also and at school also how you know uh, he is and okay. um, uh, yeah this could also be incorporated during the admission process you know okay. where uh, the, the the school can involve a psychologist um uh, where the psychologist can assess uh, the child based on uh, their skills and uh, you know once the admission is done to understand the child to maintain a personal profile the school can done, uh, do this as an extra uh, uh, procedure okay. for the teachers so that it will be better for them to plan the lesson plan and also you know uh, manage the uh, children uh, at school so when they involve a clinical psychologist say see an iq te uh, test could be done uh, and uh, you know to uh, and also if if in case the parents also report any uh, behavioral concern you know uh, holistically maintaining a profile of the child will he will help the school understand the child better so that's what i'm uh, you know trying to uh, say yes, here. understood and our teachers over here are uh, you know quite uh, uh, for coming from an understanding background of what profiling means because cbsc has made it mandatory for uh, students at least from 9 to 12 to have their own profile and mm -hmm. and uh, 
basically this profile is more oriented towards academics but probably a column on multiple intelligence could also be included i think with your suggestion that's great so well ma'am uh, this uh, one more last question before we actually conclude um the students over here or the teachers over here i should i should be very specific over here uh, what is that age wherein uh, you know the right age for us to decide that this particular person is a visual learner now multiple people could be there with their own exposure there are 35 40 children as nicely mentioned uh, to implement rotation plan like the way we saw in the video in india it's quite tough <laughs> comparatively difficult because the teacher to student ratio is quite high uh, mm -hmm. there are at least 35 40 children in each and every class and only one teacher addresses them mm -hmm. so keeping that in mind um, so how do you address that particular uh, attribute okay okay see the thing is um, uh, every child is unique and uh, uh, their brains are unique right so uh, every child is different unique and different so so they work in different ways in different phases of their lives too so the thing is there is not one particular uh, thing that you know post this age they can determine uh, uh, you know this is their uh, type of learning or this is the type of intelligence they are in say for example from uh, the age of 2 uh, to 6 they have uh, they have a different sort of interest and they explore the skill of this and uh, uh, 6 to 12 it is different and 12, post 12 it can be different so it is better for the school to assess the child you know uh, periodically like for every 4 years so that they know that okay this child is basically uh, you know uh, going through this phase of life where he wants to explore more on this so for example uh, i think you uh, played the video uh, you know some time back where the where the teacher was actually trying to uh, uh, try, trying to help the child explore themselves by not involving you know too much in whatever they do and also you know they have different groups see it's not possible for a teacher to follow uh, uh, one particular child and you know each and every child in the class but a group can be followed so there are just three groups where the teacher can you know go around and uh, see how uh, they they fit in and you know they learn things like this when you maintain a personal profile of the child and uh, you know assess uh, periodically this is a, a you know possibility where uh, the teachers Okay. Okay. Wow. Can be too. Understood. Understood. Like great. So quite some insights from you, <laughs> ma'am. Thank you so much for that. And uh, now, in order to further uh, contact you, the teachers can reach out to you. I think uh, we are giving uh, your your uh, handles. But uh, af even after reading the profile, uh, what exactly do you do uh, in your heartful parenting? Could you please throw some light on that for two to three minutes, yeah, so that uh, we all come to know what exactly you do? Please go ahead. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the thing is, uh, I basically started this page uh, when I became a parent myself. and uh, i wanted to uh, help parents um, analyze and uh, realize their own childhood uh, patterns and uh, their subconscious patterns their experiences as uh, you know children and how they have uh, th those experiences have shaped them into becoming an adult and a parent eventually so uh, sometimes what we do is we tend to parent children based on the patterns and the understanding that we have ever since uh, you know we were a uh, child and plus yes there would be uh, you know other experiences that we had had as an adult also so what happens is it it mostly goes off in unconscious uh, unconscious parenting where we don't think much before you know parenting our children we, we think that parenting uh, comes intuitively and uh, uh, most most of them you know they think okay uh, it's it's not it's not a big deal becoming a parent so our parents you know manage so we also can manage kind so here i wanted to you know bring into light that uh, you need to be conscious in your parenting and uh, uh, because that is what will help your child thrive uh, you know thrive and uh, uh, be successful in their life as an adult so uh, i have been helping parents and guiding them in uh, uh, parenting consciously and i also have a podcast uh, so you, i think the link will be shared you all can listen to it it's for uh, the public as especially the parents uh, so that you know uh, they can help uh, themselves uh, you know improve improve themselves and uh, uh, parent in a much better manner great fantastic thank you so much ma'am and uh, i think uh, heartful parenting uh, some of the podcast some of the episodes i have listened to it it's more like uh, you know a lot of misconception gets cleared like uh, a realization of uh, gratitude and then saying thank you is way different than just an instructional thank you so yeah, thank you so much for that ma'am it it really means a lot and thank you for clarifying all the questions out there i've addressed some of the questions coming on the chat as well i hope uh, teachers have answered some of the question and in case if there is any other question you can please put it on the chat and let's see if we are able to handle it otherwise uh, we will conclude the session in another one or two minutes okay. yeah any questions you can put it on the chat right away
the reflection form is also coming on the chat by the way great some of you are like 11 baj gaya now you leave is that so ma'am <laughs> okay anyways thank you so much samanvita ma'am it was great interacting with you uh, we wish to yeah. see you in further workshops in the future and uh, uh, you know some parents would be contacting you basically the teachers yeah. who are parents right now uh, please guide them and and let's yeah. let's encourage them joining in such workshops yeah thank you so yeah, much samanvita yeah. ma'am nice meeting yeah. you bye bye yes nice meeting you bye bye take care So, teachers, that's it from my side for today's uh, workshop on multiple intelligence theory. I hope you got an exposure to what so many people talking about multiple intelligence. The Spearman, then then there's Triarchic, then there's this uh, Sternberg, then J. P. Das is also there. Multiple people are there, and Howard Gardner is considered to be you know one of the ones because it it's quite. Uh, elaborate in nature it also talks about crystallized and fluid intelligence lot of things yeah but uh, having all the exposure at the school by a teacher is quite important well in this particular super sunday workshop with this stipulated time it was more like an introductory part of what intelligence is all about there could be one day where we'll talk about lesson plans according to multiple intelligence some schools have been implementing in a very nice manner just like the way i said clendel academy from hyderabad let's see if we can bring in some people and ask them to talk about it i hope every sunday you get a good exp- posha good information revision of whatever you've learned in your be it probably and i hope this sunday is uh, uh, you know as usual uh, quite fruitful i'll make sure the certification is done more from the respect for the time that you've spent over here and this could be submitted to your principals and requested for mandatory cpd hours as well so let's close for the day uh, with respect to today's topic thank you so much great interacting with one and all jai hind bye everyone reflection form is coming on the chat in case if anyone did not get it just just make sure you fill it up tomorrow 5 o'clock we have a session on uh, emerging trends in computer science curriculum interested people can participate but that's going to be more from the perspective of selection of computer science curriculum in the school for the upcoming academic year if you have not done that i request you to please join it i'll also talk about my own curriculum as well yeah thank you thank you so much thank you so much jai hind thank you thank you jyoti ma'am thank you so much if there's a question you can ask me on the chat otherwise you can fill the reflection form and spend time with your family thank you asmatullah sheikh sir thank you so much thank you bharti ma'am thank you himlata ma'am thank you so much great uh tomorrow's link reena ma'am will be there in the reflection form itself uh, the last question uh once you fill that up you'll get uh the id and you have my number also in the reflection form you can message me as well thank you thank you uh jeshi ma'am yeah you can contact her you can contact her through uh the instagram profile that's shared ma'am and otherwise you can contact me i'll i'll get you in touch with her yeah Yes. Uh. Yeah. GIS follows that. Yeah. I recently met Nagarajan sir, and we even had a word about it. Bharti ma'am. Yeah. You're right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. It should be there. In fact, CBSE even made it mandatory to have counselors. Uh. You know, in the schools. I'm not sure if it was a mandate, mandate from the current academic year, but yes, there was a circular on uh, counselors being present in the school. It's important. Yes. thank you thank you can we have a session for teachers bharti ma'am uh, what session you are asking for do let me know i shall make that as one of the super sunday workshop okay sure sukdira ma'am that will be done geeta ma'am i would request you to please message me Sure, Bharti ma'am, it could be done. You have my number. Please contact us. This could be done. Why not? Yeah. I'm I'm messaging it right away. Great. Any other questions? Anyone? What's up, sir? No. Give us time till seven to eight days. Or uh, you will be getting your certificates as well, teachers. Yeah. tomorrow session link is present in uh, the reflection form yes bharti ma'am yes bharti ma'am i'll be anyways coming to nagarajan uh, to meet nagarajan sir uh, this week ma'am uh, i can fix an appointment with you as well yeah we could we could discuss on the same 
थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू एवरी थैंक यू थैंक यू चलो मीट यू ऑल टीचर्स हैप्पी वीकेंड एंड ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर द अपकमिंग वीक आई सी यू अगेन टूमोरो एंड नेक्स्ट संडे विथ अनदर फैंटेस्टिक टॉपिक बाय एवरी Uh, Mitali ma'am please fill up the reflection form you will get the certificate automatically uh poonam ma'am i'm sharing the link of tomorrow session on the chat here itself i've shared uh, it mitali ma'am i think you are able to see that i can register for it yeah great yes i'm closing the session teachers thank you